Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Alliance's webinar series, You're On Board, featuring Adam Cooper, President of the Alliance's Board of Directors, Megan Norland, the Alliance's Advocacy Coordinator, and Leanne Roth, the Organizational Coordinator. Just to let everybody know, this webinar had been attempted on Tuesday, September 29th, 2015, due to technical difficulties, we were unable to do the webinar. So this is being recorded. It is not a live webinar, but rather it's being recorded. So You're On Board was created in 2007 as part of the Illinois Voices Project. And Amy Walker, who many of you may know, was the Illinois Voices Systems Change Activist. And we had a lot of self-advocates as they were speaking up and speaking out, learning about self-advocacy. They really wanted to, to serve on boards and on committees. And we wanted people to have the opportunity to do that and to learn those skills so that they could be successful in serving on boards and committees. And you're on board, a short guide for people with disabilities who are on agency boards and committees was developed. We still have copies of this resource. So if you are wanting a copy of the resource, just let Christine Beck Megan Norland, Leanne Roth, or Tara Wiki know, and we can get you a copy of that resource. So today we have joining us Adam Cooper, who's the Alliance Board President. We have Megan Norland, the Advocacy Coordinator, and unfortunately, Leanne Roth, who's the Alliance's Organizational Coordinator, was not able to be with us this morning. So I am Christine Beck, I am the program coordinator for the Alliance, and I am filling in for Le Leanne, and I'm glad to be here. We have people from all over Illinois who are joining us for this webinar. We have 21 member groups all around Illinois, and folks who have signed up for this webinar include Advocates in Motion in McHenry, we have self-advocates of Lake County up in Zion. Leanne comes to us from Chicago Heights. We have Livingston County Advocates in Action from Pontiac. Megan Norland joins us from LaSalle, Peru. We have Friends Helping Friends in Beardstown, Illinois. We have Change to Independence Altogether in Bloomington. From Alton, we have The Network, Adam Cooper, who not only is our Alliance Board President, he is a member of The Network in Alton, Illinois, and also he's a member of SEEK member group in Edwardsville, and Adam and I are coming to you from Edwardsville, Illinois. So welcome everyone to the webinar. And with that, let's get started. So hi everybody, this is uh, Megan Norland and I'm gonna be, I'm gonna start by telling you a little bit about this webinar today. Um, um, we want you to get ready to participate. I know this isn't a typical webinar, um, it's not live, but as we go through, we'll be asking you some questions so we think it'd be a good idea if you would just pause this recording and talk amongst yourselves and see what you can come up with for answers. And to get you started, um, start thinking about as we go through all the questions, start thinking about how many of these things you already do, um, which of these things do you do well, and which ones could you do better? So um, for starters, are you already on a board or a committee? How many of you listening to this today already serve somewhere, somehow? Um, um, where do you serve? Let's talk it over. Maybe there's somebody in the room with you today that's not a part of your advocacy group that would like to 
be, uh, like to take a leadership role. Maybe there's somebody that serves in the community at a church or somewhere. There's lots of opportunities out there to be a leader. So, so as Megan said, go ahead and pause the webinar at this point while you talk about it amongst yourselves. Have that conversation. Are you already on a board or on a committee? Once you've had that discussion, go ahead and restart the webinar to rejoin us. Adam, did, um, did you have anything to add or did you want to I tell people all the different ways that you can say that again? Sorry. I am on the board with the Alliance right now. I'm the president. Awesome. Thanks. All right. You're welcome. So, you already answered that question, so you know who in the leader, who in the room does what. So, the next thing we want you to think about is what do you like or dislike about serving as a leader? So, talk amongst yourselves, pause the webinar, talk amongst yourselves, and come back to us. And when you do, <laughs> Adam, is there are there things that you really like about Serving, uh, serving as the president and serving on SEEK? I am not on, on the board of SEEK yet, but I'm, they don't have board of directors yet. They are just a fresh group just getting started, I guess right. I Right. Awesome. Well, what do you like about being on the board of the Alliance? I guess. Advocating for myself and for others in my community and across the state. Mm -hmm. Is there anything you don't like about it? No. Oh, how nice. That's awesome. It's always good to hear. All right. So, the next set of questions. As a leader, as a president, or whatever you are, what's what has been your biggest success? And what has been your biggest obstacle? So once again, pause the webinar, think about it, take notes, do a sketch, whatever you got to do. Um, and Adam, how about you? What What is your biggest success? Being president of the alliance. Just being president? Yeah. Was there something that you've done that you think is really cool? As president? I, well, as the going home rally. Nice. Um, in case people don't know, could you tell us about the going home rally a little bit? In case there's somebody out there that's never been. It is a statewide rally in the Capitol building. And they just talk about how they want to live on their own and how they want to cool. live, I guess, I just did. Yeah, that's awesome. All right. And what about your biggest obstacle? What's been the hardest thing that you've had to do? Right now, nothing. Nothing? Awesome. Nope. And what about what you also serve on the Operation Community Access um, Committee, yeah. right? Yeah. So do you want to talk about that? Is there anything that you could say about that? That is a campaign that started last year, Speak Up, Speak Out. Mm -hmm. And that is a program that New Alliance started last year to help get more options for people with disabilities to do during the day. Very nice. Thanks. You're welcome. Hey, do you think it's been successful so far? What? Do you think it's been successful so far? Yes, I think it's been very successful. Has your group, the network, has uh, um, have have they done anything with Operation Community Access yet? We had a ice cream show to last. Awesome. So you guys are busy. And, and uh, open house where we talked about 
have different people come in and talk about services that they offer. Awesome. That's awesome. So you got connections. And huh? we are starting a to get a second uh, fund operation community at that fund we just set up. Nice. So that's going to be. You're going to have a lot to do then. Yeah. Awesome. So here's another question. I promise we'll stop asking you questions at some point. But right now we okay. have no one. So um, why, why be a part of a board, a board or committee? So this is another time to pause and think about it and let us know. You know yeah. Send us a message about why why you serve or why you choose to be a leader. So I'm going to throw it back to you, Adam. So why did you want to do all the things that you do and be president of the Alliance and do all the different things? To advocate for myself and others across the state and in my community. Very nice. Anything else? No. No? That's good. That's good for us. <laughs> yep. All right. So now we're going to start talking about what it takes to be on a board or on a committee. So, so, so you've been chosen to be on a board or a committee. Now what? So the biggest thing you have to do is prepare, prepare, and prepare some more. So um, start off with asking questions. Does the board or committee you're on have officers or leaders? Who does what for the meeting? And are there rules or bylaws? The more you know about the people you serve with, the better job you're going to do. And learn your role. Figure out exactly what you're expected to do or what maybe what you want to do. And ask other people who have done it to help you. If you learn from people who have been there, you'll do better more quickly most of the time. Um, talk to others on the board or committee or who attend meetings and ask what will be discussed. So again, the more you know, the better you'll do. Um, make sure you get any handouts that might be used or if you're taking charge as leaders do and you have to make any handouts or materials for the meetings, be sure to leave plenty of time to complete them and practice talking about them when or before the meeting so you don't get tongue-tied when you try to give your little speech. If I can add something here, a lot of times um, we need accommodations for our materials and handouts so that we can successfully be part of the meeting. Mm -hmm. So don't be afraid to put those mm -hmm. self-advocacy skills to use and ask for materials in a way that works best for you. So if you need more pictures, ask for materials with more pictures. If you need your handouts color coded, ask for that. If you need them in large print or in braille, don't be afraid to ask. Like Megan said, the better prepared you are, the better you will be able to participate. So again, you guys are all self-advocates, so put those self-advocacy skills to work. Now's the time. And if you take stock of yeah. different accommodations for the meeting, people will be more quick to trust you as their leader. You already took the time to acknowledge them and you take care of their needs. And one of the things that we have learned over the years is everybody needs accommodations. And when we start thinking about how we can make the meetings more accessible for everyone, everybody benefits. Mm -hmm. It's not just for self-advocates. Accommodations and accessibility is for everyone. Yeah. All right. So more on preparing, preparing for the meeting. Like Christine said, do you need support or any accommodations? So it doesn't have to be all about the handouts or materials. It could also be, do you need support? Do you need a staff member or a friend or someone to help you maybe read or pass things out or anything like that? Um, 
you need to make anything agendas, handouts, presentations, and ask yourself, no matter what it is, how long it's going to take. And something very important that Christine has taught me is if you're preparing for something, start from the meeting date and work backwards. That's the best way to make sure that you get everything done and, you know, you're not rushed or doing everything at the last minute. Yeah, don't wait for the last minute. Plan, plan, plan. Prepare, prepare, prepare. Um, I have to I would like to. You have what? To add. Sure. I have something I would like to add. Go ahead, Mr. President. So you've been on the board. You've been elected to the board. Now what? When I was served on the board of Impact, the network, mm -hmm. we had a, I guess, an installation meeting because we had all a bunch of new officers coming in. So we would sit in a board meeting and we would know what our role was and then we would take over the role the next month. Nice. That's a good thing to do. That's very smart. That's a great way to prepare for a meeting and to prepare new board members. Because it's scary to be a new member of a group, whether you are leading the group or you are a board member or a participant. We want everyone in the committee or on the board to feel welcome. Mm -hmm. yes. All right, so here's another question, pause, break time thing. So, <laughs> How might being prepared come in handy? So go ahead and take a minute, think about that. Is there any thing that we missed in the little spiel about getting ready that, that you think is important um, and you want to remember? So what about you, Adam? Is there something that we missed? Uh, would you like to discuss what each board member does? What was it? What did you say? For me to discuss what each board member has to do in each meeting, or as part of being prepared, discuss what everybody has to do. That's awesome. Give yeah. people a job. That's awesome. That's awesome. People will be more invested if they have a purpose. And you don't have to be on a board to have a purpose in a meeting. That's a good yeah. one. I like that. Anything else? Uh, being compared uh, makes the meetings more smoother and quicker, I think. What makes them move smoother and quicker? Being compared also makes the meetings more smoother and quicker. Awesome. Oh, absolutely. That's a, that's a good point. I think, Adam, we have all sat in meetings that were not very smooth <laughs> and went a long time, way longer than they should have. So, yeah, being prepared definitely helps them run more smoothly and, and be on time. Everybody has busy yeah. schedules and nobody needs to be sitting in a meeting longer than necessary. We've got work to do. Our job is to go and right. do the work and then leave the meeting with some tasks. Yep. And you know what? Like that sometimes people do, you know, arrive late and have con conflicts that come up, but that could be a job for somebody. Somebody to, like, command a phone and watch it and see, okay, somebody's late. Should I call them and see where they are? So there's a job for somebody. For anybody who want to do that. All right. So now we're going to talk about when you get to a meeting. Like you've done all your preparing. You have your all your handouts. You have all your ducks in a row. Now it's the meeting day. Um, so speak up if you have an idea. That's, all, that's what advocating is about. Um, it can be scary to go into a meeting, especially if you're new. But... You're a valuable person and your opinions matter. So if you have an idea, don't be afraid to speak up. Just do it in a respectful way. Um, follow, and that goes to my next point, follow the group's rules for speaking, which is 
one reason to know if there are rules or bylaws. Um, do you have to raise your hand? Do you have to make a motion? And always be polite. Say your pleases and thank yous. Um, if you don't understand something, ask for help or clarification. We talked about accommodations, and this is, I consider that an accommodation if you're not getting something to ask somebody to repeat it, because what is the point if, if not everyone's on the same page? Um, so ask to have a discussion with the group if possible, and if you feel, and if you feel it's needed, that's what meetings are for. And I'd like to add that don't be afraid to ask for help or yeah. clarification. Sometimes in meetings, we talk in something that I like to call alphabet soup. We say a lot of initials, and mm -hmm. not everybody knows what those initials mean. And I have found that if one person speaks up and asks for help or clarification, there was usually a couple other people who wanted to speak up or ask for clarification, right. but they were just a little too unsure of themselves to mm -hmm. do that. So when you speak up, that helps other people who aren't at that same point of self-advocacy. When you speak up, it helps everybody. Yeah, it shows people that nothing bad's gonna happen to them if they admit they didn't understand something. So. so this is an important one, and it can get tricky sometimes. So what if you disagree with someone or something? Like you're having a discussion about some issue and you don't really like where it's going. So disagreements are okay um, as long as they're handled the right way. And um, what do you think about that, Adam? Have you had a situation like that? That is, I agree. Yeah. Have you had a situation like that? You don't have to give us details where you kind of disagreed with somebody. Yes. It happens, you know, it's part of working with a group. Well, not only is it part of working with a group, it's just something that happens in life. It does yeah. happen in group work, but as you travel on life's journey, you are going to disagree with other people mm -hmm. or disagree about something. And it's okay, like Megan said, as long as it's handled in the right way. Mm -hmm. And a big thing is talking it out, asking for clarification, finding out what exactly somebody else might be talking about, sharing your point, and, you know, maybe you'll just have to agree to disagree. Mm -hmm. So, this is going back again to knowing your group and knowing the group rules. So, if you have, if you have something that you're not quite sure about, ask to discuss the issue according to the rules of the meeting. Um, and say why you disagree and be specific. They, you know, say, I don't like, I don't like that idea of this fundraiser. I think we should do this because don't just say that's dumb or I think it's stupid because we already said be polite and it's not nice to call somebody dumb or stupid, is it? I know you all know that, but I'm putting it out there anyway because um, it can get frustrating if, if you're button heads with somebody and you just want them to hear you, and I think it's human to kind of get angry, but you got to remember never to go there. Um, and when you're done making your case, listen to what others have to say. You might not, you might learn something. And by that, I mean, you might hear somebody else's point and go, oh, I didn't think of it that way. And you might have the same effect on somebody else. That's why you bring it up if you, if something's not working for you. So if the discussion doesn't go your way, so if you talk on and on and discuss everything, and you follow all the rules, and people are still not swayed over to your side, try not to get upset. Like, we know it's frustrating. It's frustrating for anybody. But you know, that's just the way it goes sometimes. Um, and Give it a little bit of time. See what comes of the group's decision. Maybe it won't work out the way that you think it'll work out. Maybe it'll work out for the better. And if a little time passes and you still disagree, bring it up again in the same way that you did before. Just follow the rules. Follow the 
guidelines and do it politely in a meeting. How are we doing, Adam? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Have you, had to do, have you had to do something like that before? Does your group have rules for that? We do have rules. Yeah. So there's a way to bring it up. I think if we have rules, members know what is expected of them at the meetings and when we That's know. right. Yep. It pays to have them. They, everybody wants to be a rule breaker sometimes, but it pays to have them. All right. So now we get on to why we have all those rules and guidelines. So why do we have rules? Why are they important? And can they be changed? If there's a rule in the guidelines, you know, of your group, can you say something and change it? So this is something else to pause the webinar for and discuss. So I think Adam already said why rules are important. But do you think they can be changed, Adam, if they need to be? Maybe they can be changed so people can understand the rules better. Mm-hmm. What if so what if you find if a rule is like not working for the group? Like it's making life a little too hard for the group or it doesn't really make sense. Can you change that rule? Yeah. We can. How would you do that? We would try to make it more understandable what they yeah. have to do. Yep, talk it out with the group and figure out a way to make it more understandable. Sounds yeah. good to me. All right, we have the next. There we go. So we've already talked about getting ready for the meeting, being at the meeting, and dealing with disagreements. And it can be a stressful situation. You know, and it can kind of feel scary sometimes. So I think it's good to just sometimes remember why you choose to do this. So this is another time to like pause and think about it and talk about it. Why are you choosing to be a leader and serve on a board or serve on a committee? Why do you give your time to all of this? And remember why, because that's gonna see you through tough times when when your group or whatever you serve on is having trouble, it's it's gonna happen. It's part of life. But remembering why you do it in the first place is always good. So Adam, do you have any other things that you want to talk about? No. Why you why you choose to step up and take the leadership role? To advocate for my Mm -hmm. across the state. No, you can never say that enough, Adam. That's a good answer. <laughs> All right. And I know that a big reason that self-advocates serve is, well, because it feels good to mm -hmm. serve in those roles and because when we think about the agencies that provide support to self-advocates, we need to make sure that those agency committees and boards are hearing the voices of the self-advocates. That's very important. It goes back to the nothing about us without us mm -hmm. and making sure that if you are going to run an agency that provides us support, we need to be involved. It's very important. And so for you advisors out there, help your organization include the people you serve on committees. So help your agency or organization include self-advocates. So some of the committees might be the Human Rights Committee, the Safety Committee, Staff Development Committee, and are there any other committees? Think about your agency or organization. Think about all the committees that folks have to go to mm -hmm. and committees that people can serve on. What can you do to get self-advocates included? And one of the things we didn't include here, I don't see on the list, is the board of directors. We know that there are agencies and organizations in Illinois and around the country that self-advocates are serving on the board of directors. Again, it helps meet that nothing about us 
without us. Right. So think about what are all the committees, list them out and, and ask if you're not sure, are self-advocates serving? Make it easy to include people. Decide what staff member on the committee can support the self-advocate or self-advocates. Make sure that the staff member knows to give the agenda and any other papers to the self-advocate ahead of time and to cover what's going to be discussed before the meeting starts. You know, Adam talked about that earlier. Being prepared for a meeting is so important. Think about the date of the meeting and work backwards. Don't lease things till the last minute. So if you are an advisor who's supporting someone on a committee or if you're a staff person supporting someone on a committee, really get with that person. Help them plan. Help them prepare. Help them to be successful. Make sure the self-advocate knows the time of the meeting. This is really important. We have people who work. They work within their agency or they work outside of their agency. And so make sure they know the time of the meeting. And if that time doesn't work into their work schedule, can that committee or board meeting be changed? Maybe so. I know, Adam, that you work outside. Um, you've had a job for a long time, and do you have to yeah. communicate your work hours when um, people are thinking about scheduling a meeting? I have to always consider that. I don't work Tuesdays, so Tuesdays is we always work. Oh, so great. If I have to have a schedule, a meeting is always on the Tuesday with the. Yeah, so one of the Tuesday. things. Great. One of the things that we've done with the Alliance for folks who are on the board of directors and people who serve on the steering committee, we've asked them what day of the week is good for you, what time of the day is good for you, so that we can schedule it on a day and at a time that works best for folks. And it's not just that maybe somebody has work, maybe a certain time of the day is better than another. Not everybody's a morning person. You know, let's make sure that we're doing things that are as inclusive and accessible as possible. Another bit of advice for the advisor, make sure the self-advocate has support <clears throat> so their staff know what time they need to be available. After the meeting, assist the self-advocate to complete any tasks they have been assigned during the meeting. I would say for the First couple of meetings, people just want to be included and figure out, how is this meeting running? Is this something that I want to do? I would say it's probably not the best idea to jump into tasks, at least independently or individually, at the first meeting or two. And then any other ideas? So advisors and staff, do you have any other ideas for helping people to be involved in the committees in your agency. I may have a small one and Christine can stop me if I'm overstepping bounds because I've never served in an agency like that. But um, I remember when I was new to the Alliance, like Christine said earlier, uh, people tend to talk in alphabet soup and acronyms and I didn't know any of that stuff. So Jennifer Knapp, who I know most of you, well, not um, a lot of you probably know her. She's kind of a superstar in our in our world. Um, but she, I remember sitting in a meeting with her, and she would just kind of lean over and go, "Do you know what that is?" <laughs> she would just kind of check in with me and make sure I was on the same page, which I totally wasn't. So I appreciated that. So something that I would recommend if that it would be okay is maybe having a little tape recorder or using the voice recorder on your phone and recording the meeting and then going back and helping your advocate or whoever you are supporting learn those terms and help them learn what they are and cement them in their mind so they won't be so lost the next time. 
I think that's a great idea. If you are considering taping a meeting, I just asked the other participants at the meeting, are you okay with that? You're going to use it as an accommodation. Now, if it's a human rights committee meeting or a safety committee meeting where some personal and confidential information is going to be shared, that might not be able to be done. Um, but remember, we want to make sure that people have a good experience and they are really included as a member of the meeting. Another thing that we've done about the alphabet soup is whenever we hear people talking in the alphabet soup or using initials, somebody, well, kind of shouts out, hey, alphabet soup. So everybody at the table feels comfortable saying alphabet soup. And that just gives the person who is talking in the alphabet soup language a cue that, oh, hold on, got to make sure that I spell this out in a way that people can understand. It really gets kind of comical but the point gets across. So don't be afraid to say, hey, alphabet soup, if somebody's speaking in initials. So any questions, comments, or considerations? For those of you who are participating in the webinar, if you have any questions or comments or considerations for us, you can email them into us. We realize that this is not a live webinar, but it is recorded. So we want you to participate as much as possible. And if you still have questions or comments or considerations for us, go ahead and email those into the Alliance staff. Adam, you were starting to say something. We also have a we have a fundraising committee in our in our self advocacy group. That is a group of individuals that help plan fundraisers this weekend. Awesome. That's awesome. And maybe that's something that other agencies can eventually do and other advocacy groups can do if yeah, they've yeah. done it already. Yeah, there are, you know, Anna, I'm glad that you mentioned that because I know that there's agencies and organizations that have fundraising committees or marketing committees and that's a great thing. Mm -hmm. That's a great thing for people to get involved in. You know, everybody has their specialty. Not everybody wants to be on a board of committee. Not everybody wants to be on a human rights committee or a fundraising committee or a safety committee. You know, people have things that they're passionate about. And it's making sure that it's the right committee for the right person. So a good fit is important too. Yeah. And it's okay if people visit committees. Consider that. Can someone visit the board meeting or a committee meeting to find out, is this something that I'm interested in? Mm -hmm. Until people kind of see something in action, they may not understand what it's all about. Right. So here's the Alliance contact information for Megan Norland, Tara Wicke, myself, Christine Beck, and Leanne Roth. Our website information, selfadvocacyalliance.org. And we're also on Facebook. So find us and like us. And share our page. Too. And share our page. So Adam, as we finish up, any last words? No. All right. And Megan? Any final thoughts? I don't have anything else. Just thanks for listening and thanks, Adam, for being with us. You're welcome. And on behalf of all the self advocates and all the member groups from the Alliance, I say thank you very much for spending your time with us. Thanks so much for advocating. Keep up, You're keep welcome. on speaking up and speaking out. Speaking out. Hey, bye everybody.